Hey everybody, Pastor Noah here, and welcome back to another edition of Why We Sing, as we explore the reasons why we sing certain songs together at Galilee Baptist Church. So we've been on quite a bit of a hiatus, but I am pumped and I'm glad to be back uh, with you guys for this little video series that we started during the COVID quarantine. Some of you may be new, so just a quick recap of what we're doing with this video series. We're wanting to show you guys the reason why we sing certain songs here at Gallup. We don't just sing songs because they're popular or because they have a very catchy melody, but there is a reason as to why we sing, and that reason is to make much of Christ. So we do this video series so that you will know why we choose certain songs that we sing here. Today we're going to look at the song, Cling to Christ. And this is a newer song that we've started singing together as a family here at Gallup. It was written in 2015 by Bob Coughlin and Sovereign Grace Music, and it was put on the album Sooner Count the Stars. What Bob Coughlin and, and Sovereign Grace were trying to accomplish with this album was to make a Trinitarian album. If you think about a lot of the more modern songs that are coming out, and even some of the old beloved hymns, not very many of them talk about God as Trinity, the God in three persons. So Sovereign Grace and Bob Coughlin set it out to write an entire album that focused heavily upon the Trinity and the importance of the Trinity in our Christian life. And if we look at Cling to Christ, we actually see the Trinity is prevalent throughout the song. As the song is speaking to God the Father, it speaks about the work of Jesus Christ, the Son, and what it means for us but it also talks about the sustaining power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So if we dive into the song a little bit deeper, let's look at verses one and two together. In the first half of those verses, it talks about all of the ways that me and you fail as people, about how we are striving to earn the favor of God, how we are battling needless fears, how we're listening to the voices of condemnation, we know that as sinful people that we are going to fall. We know that we are going to fail, and we know that we are going to ultimately fall short of the glory of God. But thankfully, the verses don't stop at that part. In the second half of the first two verses, we see that despite all of our shortcomings, despite all of our failures, and despite all of the shamefulness that we bring upon ourselves because of our sin, that Jesus has come that we may be made right in the sight of God. What a wonderful truth that is. That despite our rebellion, despite our tendency to wander, and despite our, even our tendency to, to seek the approval and gain the approval of God on our own accord, that when we fall short, because we know we will, that Christ has gone before us and that He has made us righteous through His perfect life, through His perfect death, and of course, through his resurrection as well. Now, as sinful people, we know that our minds are prone to wander. We know that we are prone to seek and look after the things of this world to give us satisfaction or to give us happiness. And that is where the bridge of this song comes into play. It says, it's more than I can do to keep my hold on you. Church, if we relied so heavily upon our own obedience to, to cling to Christ, we would fail more times than not. But thank God that it doesn't just rely upon us. Thank God that he doesn't rely upon our obedience for his will and for his work to be done. If we continue on in the bridge, it says all of our hope and peace is that you cling to me. It's more than just us placing our faith and trust in Christ. Whenever we make a profession of faith, whenever we are brought into the family of God, we are not solely reliant upon ourselves to maintain that relationship. But rather, God is clinging on to us as His children more so than we are clinging on to Him. As we know we're sinful and we're going to mess up, we are going to fall short of God's glory. But because God is perfect and because His love for His children exceeds our sin and our guilt, we know that because Christ is holding on to us, because He has brought us into the family, that nothing will ever take that away. We have assurance that because of Christ, that once we are brought into the family of God, 
nothing will ever take us out of the family of God. Now, verse 3 is actually used as a good reminder for us. We, of course, have to remember that uh, our salvation is not of our own. It's not simply a decision that we make. It's not just simply a battle that we fa- that we face every day. It re- is reliant upon Christ. It's reliant upon His finished work. But verse 3 is used as a reminder for us that despite all of the earthly success and gain that we may have, that it's going to fade away. If we try to put our joy in the things of this world, if we pot- try to put joy in things that will pass away, then our joy is not sustainable. But if our joy is rooted in Christ, if our joy is rooted in the finished work of Christ, knowing that we don't have to be called children of wrath, but rather we are called children of God, then our joy is sustainable. We can look at all of the loss that we have in this life. We can look at all of the things that melt away, all of the things that seemingly are going wrong, and know that we have a joy and a peace that surpasses all of the understanding of this world. Today I'm going to give us three main reasons as to why we sing the song Cling to Christ. First and foremost, we use this song as a reminder to ourselves that salvation is not our own. Remember, if salvation was reliant upon us, then we would be running a race that was fruitful. We would be pursuing God and pursuing Christ in a way that is fallen and in a way that is imperfect. But whenever we rely upon Christ, when we rely upon His finished work, and we understand and know that while we may fail, that Christ has gone before us and has won the war in our place, that is how we pursue Christ and pursue the Lord correctly. Knowing that He has gone before us and knowing that He is the sustainer of our faith and not our obedience, not our good works, but His blood, His perfect life is what sustains salvation. So first and foremost, we sing this song to remind ourselves that Christ is the means of our salvation and not ourselves. Secondly, we sing this song to thank God that He holds on to us. As we know, we are so prone to look to the world and to look to uh, things that will pass away for our happiness and for our joy. But despite that, despite our disobedience, despite our tendency to run to the things that will pass away and only give us a limited satisfaction, God does not give up on us. God does not let us go. Once we are brought into the family of God, we are His and we are His forever. We know that He is going to go before us and He is going to go behind us. So secondly, we sing this song to thank God that while we fail and while we fall short, that He does not, that He is perfect. And whenever He calls us into His family, that we are His forever and ever. And lastly, we sing this song to remind ourselves that we constantly need to cling to Christ. It's so easy to think that we can do enough good works. It's so easy to think that we can perform enough deeds at church or we can go into enough mission trips to gain favor in the eyes of God. But Scripture tells us that that is not true. Scripture tells us that the only way that we maintain right standing with the Lord is because of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. So as we sing this song, we use it as a reminder to ourselves that we constantly need to be holding on to Christ, constantly need to be seeking after Him, because that is the only way that we will be able to make it in this world as a Christian, is if Christ is at the forefront of our minds. So the last reason that we sing this song is to remind ourselves to constantly cling to Christ, even whenever everything seems to be falling around, down around us. Thank you for joining me for this edition of Why We Sing. As we close today, I want to draw your attention to the book of Romans in chapter 8, the last two verses. Paul tells us, For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So as you go throughout your week, let us remember that yes, we constantly need to be pursuing Christ and trying to cling to Him in all circumstances. But don't be discouraged whenever you fall short, because more so than you are clinging to Christ, Christ is clinging to you. Be encouraged, and I hope to see you all soon.